Two weeks after Google Next and we have all the information on a range of new awesome services that Google's released. Hi, I'm Julian Pittis and this is GCP This Month, where we round up and discuss the latest news on Google Cloud Platform. In this episode, we'll be covering the announcements from Google Next and all the releases leading up to the event. So sit back and enjoy this episode of GCP This Month. Now let's start off this segment with quick bites and then we'll hand it over to an on-ground recap straight from Google Cloud Next. Cloud Code is the name of the IDE plugins for IntelliJ and Visual Studio Code. Cloud Code makes it easy for developers to build and deploy applications on Kubernetes without having to leave their IDE. Now Google Cloud have also released version 4 signatures for Google Cloud Storage, which enhances the security capabilities available for sharing objects. You can now control factors like the signature expiry, the action the user can perform, and the resources that they can perform it on. There's another new service called Private Catalog, which allows cloud administrators to control the distribution of approved apps inside your business. It ensures that your company remains compliant by offering only the most up-to-date versions of your applications, and it ensures that the applications made available follow company policy. Cloud Data Fusion is a fully managed cloud native data ingestion service that provides hundreds of connectors and it allows your business to ingest data from various sources. You can transform this data and then you can analyze it using BigQuery. It has an easy drag to drop interface and it certainly lowers the barrier of entry for big data analytics. Now let's hand it over to Matthias who was actually at the conference a few weeks ago and he'll provide you with a quick recap. Over to you Matthias. Hey, thanks, Julian. At Google Cloud Next this year, Google sent a strong message of support to enterprises. They offered ways for absolutely anyone to use machine learning, and they also showed some love specifically to developers, too. Core to Google's strategy is Anthos. Almost every demo touched on it in some way. Anthos offers a unified way to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters, including ones on-prem and in AWS. Oh, and of course, also in GKE, right? This, along with their new open source integrations directly into the GCP console, should help more organizations um, ease their fears around lock-in and support their goals to go multi-cloud. They also released a number of new things in the AI ML space, including tools that anyone can use through Google Connected Sheets. The barrier to entry here is shrinking, and the usefulness of the tools is increasing. Google also made it easier for developers to leverage their AI services through Apigee. Well, that's all from us here at Google Cloud Next 19 in San Francisco. So back to you, Julian. Thanks for that great recap, Matthias. And remember to check out our daily recaps from the conference in the links below. Back onto GCP Gems. With a focus on Google Cloud Next announcements, because most of the major releases this month were from the conference. We had a ground team of seven cloud gurus mingling with the crowd, and we represented ACG at San Fran. So I do hope that you got a chance to say hi. Now Google had some major announcements of their own and they've certainly been working hard to gain your trust and to make switching to GCP a no brainer. Let's start with some of the juicier releases. If you would have been searching for news about Google Cloud Next, there would have certainly been a service that you would have heard coming up time and time again. Anthos. What is Anthos? Anthos is Google's solution to onboarding enterprise customers to the cloud. And notice I didn't say Google Cloud. That's because they built Anthos to be an open platform that requires no modification to your current on-prem applications. It's simple. It grabs what you have and it moves it to any cloud provider you want, be it AWS, Azure, or even your own on-prem cloud. The aim of Anthos is to provide flexibility at scale. It's an open source solution, allowing you to migrate and manage your workloads, and if needed, lift and shift to another cloud provider, or even share the workload across multiple clouds. Google's making a point to reassure enterprises that they're not locked into a particular cloud provider. It's based on GKE, which is Google's managed Kubernetes service. So you also get the latest features, updates, and security patches as soon as they land in GKE. Now, what about the rest of the enterprise crew that are still using virtual machines and wouldn't dare disrupt the flow to move to containers? Well, they've also announced another service called Anthos Migrate, which auto migrates your applications from VMs in your on-premises data center or another cloud provider into GKE. Now say that you've been able to successfully apply Anthos to your current workloads. You're happy to keep them on-prem or in AWS's EKS, which is Amazon's managed Kubernetes service, but you wanna keep your containers running smoothly and control them all from a single source of truth. Sounds pretty amazing, right? Well, on top of the other Anthos greatness, 
Google have announced Anthos Configuration Management. Anthos Config Management lets you create multi-cluster policies that set and enforce role-based access controls, resource quotas, namespaces, and it also monitors and prevents configuration drift. This applies to all your workloads, irrespective of cluster location, and it gives you a single source of truth to ease the burden on your operations team. Google released a number of other improvements that's sending a clear message that they're happy for multi-cloud and they really just want to gain your trust. They announced a few other services to help customers with hybrid cloud deployments, like 100 gigabits per second cloud interconnect and high availability VPNs, which will be backed by a 99.99% service availability SLA. They're showing that they have their customers' best interests at heart, and they want to make sure that the move to Google Cloud is as seamless as possible. They've even made a laundry list of announcements and releases to win over the security team. One such feature is GKE Sandbox, which provides a second layer of defense between containerized GKE workloads. It's built with low IO and scalability in mind, and all this is delivered behind the scenes, allowing immediate uptake and eliminating the need to learn any new controls. If you're looking for a complete visibility solution, Google Cloud Security Command Center is now generally available. The Command Center provides a comprehensive set of security management tools all from a single section in Google Cloud. They released two new features for the Command Center at Google Next. The first being Event Threat Detection, which leverages Google's Cloud's own model to provide quick detection for damaging threats, such as crypto mining or outgoing DDoS attacks. The second release is Security Health Analytics, which automatically scans your GCP accounts and helps identify issues with your environments, like public storage buckets, deactivated security logging, and much more. It's similar to AWS Inspector if you happen to be using that service in your AWS environments. Google also announced two new services to help organizations gain oversight over Google. They want to send a clear message that you as a business owner own your data, not the cloud provider. They released access transparency early in the year, where organizations have a complete transparent real-time log containing all the interactions between a Google administrator and your data. Now, if you're a customer with Platinum or Enterprise support, you get even more control over your data. They released something called Access Approval, which is a new feature that allows you to approve or deny access to your data before it happens. This adds an extra layer of governance that even the cloud provider can't bypass. Now, being a serverless guy, I couldn't let this amazing service slip by without at least a mention. Google have released a new serverless solution called Cloud Run, Cloud Run allows you to run stateless HTTP containers in a fully managed environment or any GKE cluster. It allows you to scale up or down from zero, and it charges you for only the resources you use down to the nearest 100 milliseconds. Now there were plenty more announcements that we just don't have time to go into, but they're certainly worth at least a quick read into, so we'll display them really quickly on the screen right now. That was a lot. Now, if you didn't get time to read all that, check out the official Google Cloud blog for their wrap up on the Google Cloud Next announcements at the link on the screen now. Now, at the end of all the great announcements, let's move on to my favorite section of the show, Guru of the Month. Now that we've been running for a month, we can actually choose a winner and give away some free stuff. So our winner of the first ever GCP Guru of the Month is Philippe Martina. Yay! Congratulations, Philippe. We'll be sending you a care package containing a t-shirt, some stickers, and a hand-signed card. For all you other gurus who want a special prize package, try your luck by answering our question, which can be found on this link. That's all we have for this month's Google Cloud Platform releases. Tune in to next month's video. I'm Julian Peters, and I'll see you next time on GCP This Month.